Hi, this is for your ECE3300 lab for the summer of 2021. This is lab one, the four bit two by one MUX. And in this lab, you can see here, we have the schematic symbol for what we need to create in Fairlog. So we have a four bit input for A and B, and then we have a select input, which is one bit, and then a four bit output, which we call F. And this is the theory behind what we were gonna do. So first we made a truth table, um, in this case, X is not a do not care. It's a zero or a one. I guess it is a do not care, but um, in this case, it's arbitrary. And it was just easier to shorten the truth table in this manner. So when select a zero, A passes through, as we can see with our truth table. Uh, zero and one, when select a zero, passes through. And I'm able to curly brace to uh, say that this is uh, A passing through. And then we did the same with B when the select was one. So in this case, we can make a K-map from this truth table. We can see that we have our groupings right here. Uh, they're both groupings of two. And the resultant Boolean equation from this is A and not select, or B and select. So now we need to go into Vivado, where we created the Verilog version of this circuit. So to start, we made a basic module for the MUX. In this case, I call it Lab 1, 2 by one MUX. And we can see here there's um, nine inputs, though there's only three listed right here. Let's have the keyword, three keywords of input, and then four outputs, but only one keyword of output. All of these are wires uh, for this module. And um, we can see input A is a bus of four lines, same with B, and same with the output called mux out. And then we have a, our one bit select line, which we call mux cell. So in this case, uh, since we had to do a gate level implementation of this design, uh, I just assigned each line on our mux output to the Boolean equation that we made. So you can see that here starting from three, which is the fourth line. Uh, so mux out three equals a3 and not mux select or b3 and mux select. So we did that for all the other uh, input line or output lines as well. And then next I made a top module uh, just to, to wrap our module into for good practice. Uh, I called it lab one, two by one mux top. So same as before, we have two input buses, uh, which I called switch A, switch B, and then our select switch. And I called them switch because now I'm referencing the IO that we're gonna be using on our uh, development board. And then we have our output bus, which I call LED since we're gonna be outputting our binary results to LEDs. And since this is a top module, all I had to do was make an instantiation of the previous module so you can see that here, lab one, two by one MUX. And for this module, I just called it MUX, all capitals. And we use the by naming method in order to instantiate the module. Next, I uh, pulled the XDC uh, constraint file from the GitHub for this development board. And we can see here our nine input IO switches. So we have um, four for A four for B and one for our select line. And then we have four LEDs for our output. Then I created a test bench. And in this case, um, we just called it lab one, two by one test bench. And um, it consists of three registers and one wire. Two of the registers are um, also four line buses. So we have A test bench, B test bench, um, the select test bench, and then output test bench. And we had to instantiate our top module, which is just called four bit mux. And then once again, the name by naming convention in order to instantiate our um, inputs and outputs. So to start the test bench, use the initial and begin keywords, and then like we did in the truth table, we set an arbitrary value for B, 
and um, we tested in this case since we need to test all four bits um, 0 0 0 0 for a all the way down to um, hex value f for a but uh, we kept b and the select constant while we were testing a uh, we chose hex value f for b since um, all the lines would be high so while we're actually testing in our FPGA board if we see that there is a value that should not be high and is high we can see that B failed and then um, our select is low because we are testing A so you can see here through all my code we tested all the way up to hex value F for A while select was low then we flip-flopped it for B and we made the select one since we are testing B in this case so you can see all that code here and then at the end we gave an extra 10 nanoseconds um, before the finish just so that way it would look nicer in the waveform and talk about the waveform we can see that file here um, so for the first 160 nanoseconds which is up to this point oh. sorry which is up to th about this point right here um, you can see that A, right, when the select is low, A passes through while B just does nothing. Um, so 0 through F, we can see that A passes through. Then we set our select high, and we made we kept our A to be F, just as before we did with B. And um, select is now high, so you can see right here, your output, that um, B is passing through, which is what we want. And then for our utilization, there we, go. we have our two lookup tables down here with our um, 13 bonded uh, IOBs. And if we do our summary of our power, we could see here uh, 4.189 watts. Um, and dynamically, it's 4.073 watts and uh, 100. <laughs> 17 milliwatts while the device is static. Um, so then we can see the generated schematic through Vivado. See here that A is a 4 bit input, same with B, and then our select line, our buffers, um, our MUX, and then our output with more buffers. Um, then we can generate our bit stream. So if we open our target, auto connect it to our FPGA board right here. We'll just wait for it to upload the bitstream. Okay, so I changed views just so it's a little bit easier to see the FPGA board. Um, so here are our nine input switches. We have these four as A, this being the most significant and this being the least significant. And then these four switches for B, this being the most significant and this being the least significant. And then this is our selector switch. And then these four LEDs right here are our um, output LEDs, with this being the least significant, this being the most significant. Okay, well, while our selector is high, um, we're gonna pull A high like we did in our test bench, and we can see that nothing passes through. Then we can go through all the possible values of B. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, and we can still see that our A is all high. So now let's pull our selector low like we did in our test bench and all of A low. You can see while B is high, it does not pass through while selector is zero. So then we'll count through A, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. We can see that B is still high, pull it all low, pull all A low. We can see that our MUX works.